Okay, so uh, this part of the lecture, uh, we're going to go through using JET. Uh, it's short for just another GIF sampler. <laughs> and uh, yes, JET. And uh, it's a GIF sampler and it's a software. And uh, yeah, please mute yourself, you're not speaking. And um, so this will involve, uh, like, say, of course, we have to figure out how to download the software, install it, and then we also going to use our package called RoundJax uh, to call the function. Okay. So um, there are things that you need to do. So um, first of all, uh, the particular R package that we're going to use is called RoundJax. Uh, but in addition to that, you will see soon that you will need to download the JAX from the software to your computer and install it as well. So there are two parts. Uh, the run JAX is R package. That's, uh, you can think of it as an interface that you'll be able to use JAX software from R. Okay? So we use this package. And you will see, I'm going to give you an example uh, of the model, I mean, the normal, stuff, the normal sampling model that we did before when we have both of them unknown. And you will see that, so last time, remember, we had to derive the full conditional, uh, full conditional posterior distribution and then code it step by step, right? So with JAX, as well as you know what the sampling model is, in our case is the normal, and also the prior distribution that we're going to give, for this case is the normal and the gamma, you can, um, the JAX script can be pretty descriptive of the sampling model and the prior. And so today we're going to see how you can do that and hopefully run your first JAX um, output. Um, so first of all, um, hopefully you bring your computer, please do this, uh, download JAX at this link. So uh, that's a um, URL, you'll be able to click it. And uh, what that gets you will be a, um, I think a site. And it depends on your computer, if you're using Mac, please uh, download the Mac version. If you're using Windows, uh, please download the Windows version. And just follow the instruction to, um, to install, okay? And uh, another thing is you will have to do this install packages. Um, so that's the run JAX R function, R, um, R function, so R package. And then you will have to load this run JAX um, package. Okay, so I'm going to uh, wait here for a little bit so um, we can all get this working. And yeah. yeah. So make sure there are two things happening. First is JAX, the software. And second is the round jacks package. Okay, so that's why if you uh, to download and install jacks, you have to go to this link and you choose Mac or um, Windows version based on your machine. The other part is install and load the round jacks R package. Okay, so you need to do both. And um, once that is done, you'll be able to start running uh, Jax software. Okay, so um, we'll continue, but I will walk back um, like doing little breaks when uh, when people are still trying to figure out things, but these are the basic steps, the two steps that you need in order to run your JAX code. All right, so let's look at how you can write a JAX code. I mean, that's the most important part. So remember, this is the case that we have the unknown mean and standard deviation, where we have a normal sampling model and we give two prior, two independent prior distributions, and with the sampling density to be normal, IID, we come to those two equations, right, if we did the uh, derivation diligently. And uh, the thing is, uh, these are the two full conditional posterior distributions. And last time, on Tuesday, when we talked about how to code our own GIF sampler, we have to use these two equations, right, these two derivations. So what we're going to do today with Jack is, well, it's going to save you a lot of work. You don't even need to derive the full conditional posterior distributions we can actually just use these two chunks. Okay. As long as you know what the prior distributions are, and as long as you know what the sampling density will be, the JAX script will be able to, to help you. Once you write it correctly, it will be able to run the uh, GIF sampler for you. So let's see how we can do that. There's some subtlety. So we only need to focus on the sampling density and the prior, so I rewrite the uh, sampling density on the first line, and then the prior distribution, the two of them. And as you can see in the bottom, that's not all of the JAX code, but that's the main code to write the model itself. And so you see that we uh, initialized something we call model stream, and we save 
the writing of the model into this model stream. We're going to use that later in a minute. So, but focus on the blue part, that's our green part. The few lines in green where we're actually writing the model. Okay, so you see that we start with model. So that's what this closing here. And in it, we have a part about the sampling density. And two lines about the prior distribution. Can you see that these two chunks are corresponding to the sampling density and um, the prior that we are trying to specify? So something important here is that you will need to write a for loop because now we're giving IID normal sampling density for each of the y. Okay, so y use um, so the syntax. So this syntax we're looking at right now, they're Jack syntax. So there are slightly different things. So for example, you use this tilde to represent, and you use dnorm to represent it's the density function, okay? And then you go mu and phi. So one thing special about the dnorm in um, JAGS is it takes mean and precision. And remember in the regular R code, what do we have when we're doing normal? So when you do regular R code, You have, I think, say, D norm. You actually have to input three things, I think. The mean, the standard deviation, and I think the random value they're trying to estimate. Okay? So that's what we typically do in the D norm. But our norm, if you remember what we did, generating random normal values is how many you want to generate, right? And then it's mean and standard deviation. Okay, so that's regular R code. In JAX, it works differently. First of all, D norm now stands for the density. Okay? And we are working with sampling density, so that's why we use D norm. Second, um, you only need to give mu, which is the mean, but you're giving one over sigma squared, which is the precision. Okay, that's just how the like how the software is written. It takes precision instead of standard deviation. So make sure that you input the right thing. And lastly, you, you use this little tilde, just like what we do here, right? Yeah, it's new, if you can. I think that's what it is, yeah. And, uh, and then you use yi, each of the yi, with bracket, uh, to be following this density. Okay? And make sure that you write it in the loop. So here, capital N stands for how many observations we have. Okay? And y later, we're going to initialize this as a vector of all of the data points. So that's the sampling density part. The second chunk here is the two um, prior distribution. So first of all, mu. So it's going to be a normal like what we did over here. So make sure that you input its mean. We use mu zero for now. And its um, precision. Okay. So later, as you can see, we um, want to I have a question, actually. Um, why are we specifying mu and phi after using them in the yi? Have they been entered already? Yeah, so, um, right. So, uh, Tantric's question is whether we have to be careful about the order of the sampling density in the prior distribution. Because if you look at the way that we're doing it, we are writing a sampling distribution first, right? And then we're actually using mu and phi when we're writing the sampling yeah. distribution. And then later you put um, the prior. I think it doesn't matter in terms of what JAX takes. Uh, typically, at least, um, I mean, I guess in this course, uh, when I try to write up the material, mostly I start with the sampling density <coughs> and then go to the prior distributions. So I don't think, yeah, so JAX wouldn't give you an error saying that I oh, see. we find it first. Um, but you can, I think you can do whichever way. So is it like an anonymous function in a sense, like mu and phi are arguments, and then y yeah, sort of case. like? Yes. Yeah, why well, sort of is a dictionary? Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, okay, so for the prior distribution that we're looking at right now, again, for the normal, whenever you're giving a normal distribution, make sure that you put the mean and the phi. Okay. And lastly, phi we're giving as a gamma, and it will just be alpha and beta. Later, you will see that we're going to input those values from an input later. But this is the main chunk of um, how to specify the model. So just see how like each chunk of the, uh, of the 
code is representing or corresponding to the actual model that we're doing. Okay. And this is all we need to do when we are uh, trying to use JAX to run the view sampler for us. Okay. So this is the first step. Second step, if you go to um, second stage, is that you have to pass the data and the high you're not speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, pass the data and hyperparameter values to JAX. So you see that, remember, in the uh, model stream that we saw before, just now, Y is the list of the data value. Okay, so now we give Y to be, uh, I guess, C sample, the log total expenditure. And N is the number of observations earlier, so you can use length of Y. Okay, so we need that. And lastly, it's the data. This is just what I usually do, but you can name it anything else if you want. Uh, pretty much, we need the data, why? We need the number of observations. And remember, we need to give those hyperparameters values. Okay, so I'm using exactly what we did using the uh, self-coded uh, give sampler previously. So remember, we're giving 5-1 for, uh, for the normal mean and 5. And remember, we're doing normal 5, 1, typically when we write this, this is a standard deviation, right? So what you need to be careful about is you have to convert this into C0 because JAX only takes uh, C. Or it doesn't take, uh, but in this case, it doesn't matter because it's 1, yeah. But in other <laughs> cases, be careful that you don't make the mistakes. And alpha and beta, again, uh, previously we're using gamma 1, 1. So in this case, we're using gamma 1, 1 as well. Yeah, just mute your, if you can. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, all right, so that's the passing and uh, passing data and hyperparameter. And the last part here, those few lines, is to run the actual JAX code for this model, okay? So this, as you can see, is where we start to call this run JAX function from the package, okay? And what we need is the model stream, so that's from the previous slide where we wrote the model. And you're gonna pass the data into this. So the data comes from here. And the monitor argument here is that we want to keep track of the mu and the C. Okay, so any parameters you want to keep track of, you put them here. So n.change is the number of deep samplers that you want to run. For now, we're running one, just to mimic what we did last time. And um, so those ones, for now, don't worry about it. But uh, pretty much um, the total number summing up this three over here is the number of iterations that we do. Okay, so remember we did I think ten thousand last time. Okay, uh, and this time Jax uh, it considers other stuff. So we're going to talk about what they mean in a minute. But for now, um, just just notice that this is like there are three different options that you can put in how many iterations you run. In this case, the sum of them is what you run. Okay. And lastly, is theme. We're going to talk about it as well. It's mostly later to be used to make sure that we get independent draws instead of dependent draws. Okay. Right now, we're not uh, like we're getting a dependent draw, so we do not do any thinning. So thing is one. We're going to talk about those um, arguments um, after we finish this, and then get to the MCMC diagnostic. So does the overall structure make sense? Okay. Any questions about like how so like how to do exactly which part and then um, so don't forget that you have to have first of all the model stream like this and then you pass the data and the hyperparameters then you run the code okay so the markdown file that you see I think is in that particular order okay? so maybe consult that whenever you have questions and lastly once you run the model you're able to get some summary okay? so Remember, previously here, we saved the output in this posterior. So when you're doing summary of the posterior draws, you can simply type summary of posterior. And remember, we keep track only mu and p, so that's what the output is about. So the output, actually, if you look at it, gives you a quantile at the 5% level, quantile at the 95% level. So if you consider this too, it's going to give you the middle 90% credible interval. Okay, and then this column medium gives you a median value, mean gives you the mean value, standard deviation gives you the standard deviation of, um, say, in this case, I think 5,000 iterations you're looking at the draws. Okay, and uh, there are a couple of things that we're going to focus more 
uh, later you will see that this is pretty important. And, um, and also, of course, how to get those um, credible interval and the median and mean. Okay. So we're going to see how to um, do that. But this is a general uh, structure of what you do when you're trying to run JAX code. So for now, um, since I, I think most of you are getting ready to install and download JAX and all that, so let's just spend a few more minutes um, making sure that everybody can get it. And I'll walk around uh, as, uh, answering questions. And hopefully, you will be able to run those few lines that I demonstrated. And um, you should be able to get something really close to the summary output that I have over here. Yeah, the model they're working with right now is pretty simple. So you shouldn't take too long to run. Okay, so make sure that it's uh, overall working for you. I'm happy to check, uh, I guess, after class or in between those um, discussion breaks mm -hmm. that I can check exactly um, what you have done and whether there's any um, mistakes or problems. Okay. All right.